What's up, guys? Well, this sucks bad. This sucks real bad. Woj is saying if Kawhi Leonard does become available in trade talks, the Celtics will be interested in probing the Spurs about a deal. Now, unless the deal is Kawhi Leonard plus perhaps the Kings pick next year, I want no part of this. Throw in Yabaselli, you can have him. You can have Marcus Morris. But, dude, uh, there, there's this anti-Jalen Brown sentiment going, going around in Celtics fan and Celtics journalist circles, okay? And it pisses me off to no end. And uh, here's Woj again saying, Indiana had little interest in trading Paul George to the Lakers. That'll be the same case for Spurs too. Boston gives Spurs b best building blocks of assets. One of young forwards, likely Jalen Brown. Its own 18, 19 protected Kings pick. And then he's saying Lonzo to the Spurs, don't hold your breath. But, you know, like yesterday there was a Kevin O'Connor and Bill Simmons podcast or something like that. And they're they're talking about throwing around Jalen Brown like he's just like he's nothing. And, uh, you know, people love the Celtics, but they love to be right more. And these guys were simply wrong about Jalen Brown. OK, they thought he couldn't shoot. They thought that Chris Dunn or Buddy Heald would be a better better pick for the Celtics. Right. And they said he couldn't shoot and that he, he was going to be a downgrade from Avery Bradley. Meanwhile, he was better than Avery Bradley, even as a rookie because of his size and defense and rebounding. And uh, and Jalen Brown even shot 40 percent from the three point line when he was starting in place of Avery Bradley. OK, and the Celtics played even better. And it was a 20 game sample size. And then this year, Jalen Brown was supposed to be a total afterthought, still not ready, a downgrade, LOL, from Avery freaking Bradley. Meanwhile, he's the biggest, strongest shooting guard in the league and one of the best defenders and a great 3 and D guy. What did he shoot this year? Like 39% from three in his second year? After all, you bitches said he couldn't shoot. And he helps drag us into the game seven of the Eastern Conference Finals, guys. He got hurt against the Bucks. He came back heroically against the 76ers in game two, I believe, and helped us stomp on the 76ers in five games, gentleman sweep, averaging about, what, 18, 19 points a game in the playoffs on an injured hammy, still shooting the ball well, and almost getting us to the finals. But we come up ever so slightly short, and all people can remember is that he had one bad game at the end possibly hindered by that hamstring that he was playing hurt through, you know? And no one wants to give him any credit for being the player that he is because they were wrong about him from day one. Just like people who booed and freaked out about the Terry Rozier pick back in 2015, those people are so bitter. They were so bitter when, when Terry Rozier was having all the success this year. Kyrie goes down having led the Celtics to an 8-10 and 10 record in his last 18 games. Terry Rozier steps in and starts winning at a 75% rate or a 750 w win percentage, okay? And brings us all the way to, and then we went up 2-0 on the Cavs in the Eastern Conference Finals, led by Terry Rozier. And then they said he couldn't couldn't score on the road, and then he's put up six three-pointers on the, on the Cavs in Game 6. And he has one bad game in Game 7, and all these people who hated Terry Rozier and Jalen Brown from day one you know, these mass holes, they, they die hard. They get a grudge on somebody, some young guy who hasn't had a chance to prove himself yet and who's not a big diva with a big contract, and they, and they just start hating on these guys, just like they hated on Kelly Olynyk. But uh, all these people so eager to trade Jalen Brown, and it's like you're not thinking, you're not, you're not, you hate this guy so much, from day one that you can't even picture how, how much better he's going to get in two years. And even next year, he's going to get so much better next year. Cause he just started for a whole year. He knows exactly what he has to work on. He knows exactly what his weaknesses are. He knows he needs to be higher IQ and a little more savvy and a little more poised on offense and defense. And he's on a dirt cheap contract for another two years. And then we have him we have him under control where he will likely outperform that rookie scale max contract and you want to trade him 
just be and 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 you want to trade him instead of Kyrie Irving, who has one year left on his contract, gimpy knees, and is then going to be up for a thirty-five, forty million dollar a year five-year extension after next year. A guy with a total crap attitude who can't play within the team concept, plays shit defense, and guys like Jalen Brown and Terry Rozier showed we were exactly as good as we were with Kyrie Irving and these guys sitting on the bench. So I really hope, I really hope that Jalen Brown is not in these trade discussions. Even if Kawhi Leonard is is better or significantly better or slightly better, whatever it is, next year, because Jalen Brown's going to be even better than he was this year. And even Draymond Green was calling him an all-star this year, okay? He showed flashes of that. He just didn't get a chance to shine in the first half of the year with Kyrie Irving taking twice as much shots as anyone else, not believing in any of her teammates. As soon as, Ky- as, soon as Kyrie goes down, Jalen Brown's averaging, what, 17, 18 points a game, just like Jason Tatum averaging about 19 points a game. And these guys are showing that they're stars, basically borderline all-stars, if not outright all-stars, the second they get a chance. So now you want to trade an all-star. Fuck you if you don't even believe that. Now you want to trade an all-star for on a on a six, seven million dollar a year contract for Kawhi Leonard to play this flaky, weirdo, uh, toxic, selfish, you know, head case, mental case, who can't play hurt, another Kyrie Irving. He's just like Kyrie Irving, actually. And you want and he wants to go to the Knicks even. His two teams are the Knicks or the Lakers. Does that say winner to you? You guys are fucking losers. You want to you want to trade Jalen Brown for for uh, and a Kings pick for Kawhi Leonard just to pay Kawhi Leonard thirty four thirty five million dollars a year and then and then hope he resigns next year just like Kyrie Irving and then hopes for a one year freaking rental. This is Victor Oladipo all over again. We know who won that trade. Indiana won that trade. So it better not be Jalen Brown in this uh, trade, and the and the Celtics fans better start giving Jalen Brown some more respect. You know, the only reason you're not giving him respect is because you were fucking wrong about him, and you go out of your way every single time to diminish how good he is and how much better he's going to be next year and what a great value he is. Jalen Brown for $7 million or Kawhi Leonard for $35 million? What do you think is the better value, guys? What do you think is the better value? Jalen Brown plus... $27 million in contract to be spent elsewhere, even on a big star? Or Kawhi Leonard himself, who doesn't play hurt, is mentally weak, is a weirdo, doesn't pass the ball, stopped playing defense last year, and a guy who wants to play for the Knicks. And you're going to alienate one of your building block cornerstones, franchise players. Guy just totally taken for granted. Pisses me off. All right, let me know what you think about Kawhi Leonard to the Celtics, guys. And then what are you going to do? You're not going to have room for all these guys. You know, you're going you're gonna to pay Kawhi Max and you're going to pay Kyrie Leonard, Kyrie Irving Max, and Gordon Hayward and Al Horford. I'd rather just roll with uh, Gordon Hayward and Al Horford. We don't need those fuckers. We don't need those injury-prone, injury antisocial weirdos who are controlled by their father and uncle working together and together, that combined power of Kyrie Irving and Kawhi Leonard, they would have a total uh, iron grip on the Celtics franchise. And they would say, hey, you do exactly this. You play exactly this way. You give these guys exactly this many, sh- many shots, or they're both going to sit out injured. You don't think they'll do it? Kyrie Irving just threatened to sit out the whole year for the, for the Cavs if they didn't trade him. And, uh, and uh, Kawhi Leonard just sat out the whole year. Because he was only 99% healthy, and he was only averaging 19 points a game. Neither of these guys showed up to support their teammates in the in the playoffs. And that's that's going to be your building block because they have star power. That's that's worse than that's worse than uh, getting LeBron. That's way worse than getting LeBron. That's a loser mentality. That's a Knicks mentality. That's a perennially mediocre star fucker mentality. That's not Celtics mentality, guys. Let me know what you think. I'll see you soon. Peace.